And, oh, here we go. Okay, so our layers are looking pretty good. I'm gonna scroll up to the top. One of the things about this image is that I, I think it might have been folded or one side was underneath some books or something because it's uh, lighter here than it is here. And that is such an easy fix. So let's, first of all, let's, let's go up to, before we do that, let's go up to the horizon for a second. And horizon's not super straight. So I'm gonna select it and hit Command T and tweak it a little bit. You don't wanna grab the sides unless you are holding the shift, right? Which will uh, constrain proportion. There we go. And then you can always clean this, uh, clean anything up on the beautiful horizon uh, layer mask. So I'm gonna make a new layer at the very top and I'm gonna call it lighting evening, evening, how, how you spell it? Evening and evening is spelled exactly the same. Well, you know which one I mean? I don't mean like taking your lighting out. I mean evening it out, okay. All right, so very simply, we could do, we could do a curves and we could mask that. We could do so many things to fix this, but I'm, let's just go the path of least resistance, easiest thing. I'm gonna paint white on this side. So the paint is 100% opacity. I have my layer, blank layer, nothing in it, and I'm just gonna paint white. And then I'm going to take the layer blending mode from normal to soft light. Oops. And you'll see right now we can see it. We can really see it, okay? So we're gonna take the opacity of the layer down. And now we, we probably, probably gotta kinda like run, or run a line up the middle. So this is without it, and this is with it. It kinda, it evens it out, right? It takes away um, uh, some of the like faded, fatigued look. Kind of evens it out. With the uh, with dodging, you can also try overlay, which has a little more contrast. So you may like that. This is A, soft light, and B, overlay. A little more contrast. So you can do that. Um, with burning, however, it has to be set on soft light. Okay? So now this is looking pretty good. Um, the one thing that I recommend is if you are going to try to get this out of the sky to cover it with another clean part. Because I have not had a lot of luck retouching it where it has not looked retouched, right? So at this point, because we've evened out the lighting and it's looking pretty good, we can make um, a selection. And the selection at this point, I'm gonna make another stamp visible because I wanna have this little fringe, this levels, this black and white, the horizon, and the dodging all on one layer. I'm gonna make another stamp visible. You only have to make stamp visibles if you are going to do something like make a selection in which the selection lives on several layers. Does that make sense? So in this case, I wanted to make a selection of a clean part here. This clean part here lives on, has um, black and white on it and dodging, um, dodging on it. So when you have more than one, you're trying to affect more than one layer, that's when you want to make the stamp visible. But you don't need to make it unless you are going to say cut something out. And in this case, we're gonna copy a piece and move it around. I can't copy it from this, from this part. It, does, it doesn't live here. It also doesn't live here. It doesn't live here, it doesn't live here, it doesn't live here. It lives here, but things have been done to it above it. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a little bit of a weird thing, right? But you'll get, you'll get used to it. Um, so oh, I, actually, I can just turn this off and show you. If I copied, so make a nice juicy marquee and I copy it here. And then I wanna retouch, say, 
See, there's, do you see? It's not, it doesn't have the uh, lighting applied to it or the black and white. So that's why it looks like this. Now, could you just leave it down on um, right here? You could, you could leave it right here, but depending on how you masked the horizon, you may have a little bit of interference because some guys, sometimes people just did this, right? So if I'm moving a part of this sky, I may have some interference between my new sky layer and my horizon layer. I know that, like, that, does that make sense? It's kind of a weird thing. So what you can do is always grab a big soft brush and just go along this top and bottom here. And that will blend it in. So when I, if I want to use this clean piece, but if you haven't edited the horizon layer, the tops and bottoms, you'll have an overlap and it will be noticeable. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if it doesn't make sense, because I can totally just keep going. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I'm going to show you using this new stamp visible layer. If I make a selection here, because I need to cover this up, and I make a selection here, and I hit Command J, right? That and that might overlap in a weird way. So that is why. So that's why I made a new layer. So let's just okay. Yeah, we can actually just do that. So you see how it's like, well, it, the reason it is brighter is because I copied it off of the stamp visible two, second one, right? Yeah, that's why it's a little brighter. Let me back up one step. If I copy it off of here, Command J, these two layers the horizon and the sky above the horizon, if they're not edited in a way where they don't overlap or cause repetition, which is a sure sign of retouching, that's why I made another stamp visible. So I could pull the information off of one layer at the very top with all of the new edits done to it. Does that make a little better sense? So do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. I mean. Might this be a problem? It might or it might not be. I just don't mind making layers. One of the big problems used to be that you were worried about size, right? You're like, oh, I don't want like a gigantic size. Well, this file is only 12 megapixels and 105.2 megapixels with layers. That's nothing, right? Also, the fact that these computers don't that kind of sludge along and they can deal with bigger files, it gives us a little bit more freedom. So once you have up here, I'm going to go back, make a marquee, a big old chunky piece, and hit J to jump it to a new layer, and move it over. Now, because of the gradation of the sky, this is extremely finicky, and I, and I have very limited success with it, but I'm going to show you what I do. So I grab the brush. You gotta make sure that you get at least the bottom and the top. And you can kind of see it, right? So what I do is I take the opacity down a little bit. And then you might be like, well, you can kind of see the lines through it. Yeah, but it's not as bad. And remember when we started talking about like retouching versus restoring? And in this case, this is one of those situations where I'm masking it, kind of trying, you know, to just make it less visible. Because this is a, it, you would think, oh, how, how hard can this be? Like I've retouched harder things. This is really hard to retouch because of the tonality change, right? I've, I have struggled with it. Um, so this is my solution. This in the center 
is is also here, right? It looks kind of like uh, like a bit of marring, right? So you could maybe use a clipping mask on this to lighten it up. You could try. Or we drag this up a little bit, and then we just clip it into the top. A, B. That works pretty well. So that's another way that you can use a clipping mask to equalize your lighting, right? So if you have uneven lighting, chances are you can solve it with dodging and burning. And then if you're cutting and pasting and doing compositing like we're doing, clipping masks are a great way to even out that lighting and keep it consistent. That was levels. And you can use curves, but for simple kind of quick, dirty, dirty and easy ones, I usually use levels. Again, totally up to you. You have so many choices. This is just one way of approaching it. All right.